Traditionally, coffee was grown in shady conditions where its taste would reach an optimal level due to less exposure to the sun, allowing coffee beans to pertain its oils. Shade-grown coffee would benefit koalas, luwaks, and even songbirds through its unprocessed berry-like form. In parts of Mexico, Colombia, Central America, and the Caribbean, most of the forests still standing are in traditional coffee plantations. These provide the last refuge for birds that have lost their habitat in the vast destructions of tropical rainforests. These practices of deforestation demonstrate how greedy people accept the decline of quality of product as well as destruction to natural habitats just to make more. Hear the tiger growl in fury. Sun-grown coffee does more damage than just deforestation. Soils in some plantations are more exposed to the elements, particularly drenching, rains typical of tropical areas. This means more erosion of topsoil and the leaching of chemical fertilizers, pesticides and herbicides into local watersheds. Erosion and water pollution are serious consequences of growing coffee on some plantations. Mountain grown coffee is also sun grown, so claims by Folger Coffee's famous Juan Valdez that mountain grown coffee is best is not such a precise claim. The wild boys, dressed in banana costumes, interview a proud herd of eastern Dolan gorillas who are being affected by deforestation in parts of Africa in order to make coffee plantation. The gorilla responds to him that everyone will soon be affected by the irreversible damage humans have caused. A humble shade-grown coffee picker has more work to do than a plantation coffee picker since the beans are scattered all over the place and not just in rows and columns. There are numerous wonders about shade-grown coffee. Coffee plants in some plantations grow faster in age more quickly than those grown in shade and therefore must be replaced more often, specifically at about 6 versus 30 year intervals, respectively. In shade plantations, dead leaves from overstory trees provide nutrients to the coffee shrubs as they decay. In some plantations, these nutrients are not available, so fertilizers must be used, especially in nitrogen, which is essential to coffee growth. There are fewer weeds in shade plantations because fallen leaves from overstory trees in shade plantations act as a natural mulch. Herbicides are needed to control weeds in some plantations. The so-called finest and best tasting coffee in the world is shade grown, but it comes from a substantially different process. The Indonesian weasel-like rodent, the luwak, eats the coffee berries that grow in the rainforests. The luwak only digests the outer part, leaving the coffee bean intact, yet a bit nutty. Delicate cleansing processes take place to extract each coffee bean to get what some people know as the Kopi Luwak coffee, which sells from $150 to $500 a pound. America runs on coffee, much like the rest of the world, and if we drink shade grown, we will assure a future to coffee. Remember, Jungles and forests will slow down the climate change and you can do everything to prevent it.